I need to have some structure to this. Hi, welcome to the Motion Picture Notion. It's me, your host Gabriel Burton, <sighs> and my wife Caitlin. Hello. And uh, so, since we're under quarantine, we're doing something a little special. We're uh, basically, I'll pick a movie that I like, she'll pick a movie that she likes, and we'll do kind of a double feature because we have very different tastes, I would say, in movies. Little background on that. I do not care for horror movies. So, Jay really has to push me to watch anything, and I think he enjoys that, that he's, um, you know, he likes to sell me on something I'm not really, you know, inclined to look at myself. And But we didn't watch a horror movie. No, but it's, I don't know what to call um, your taste, but it's it, there's not a lot of divergence there. You Fantastical. Know? My fantastical taste. Whereas I prefer more human stories without any fantasy mine's whatsoever. Mine's fantastic. Just like him. <laughs> so we watched we watched a double feature of the 1985 science fiction starring Dennis Quaid, Enemy Mine, and Selena. What did you think of Enemy Mine? I really enjoyed it. It reminded me of The Twilight Zone. We used to watch The Twilight Zone with my dad and my Similar brother. Similar writing. Yeah, and so I liked... Uh, do you want to describe the plot? I feel like that's important. Yeah, it essentially takes place in the future where the human race is at war with this race of alien beings called Drax. And they're sort of like lizard people. Oh, I fell. They're sort of like lizard people, and they don't... They're sexless, they're asexual, so they just, like, have a baby whenever, like, the baby comes, basically. They're neither male nor female, um, so there's like a, I, I would actually, I mean, for 1985, I would say there was a pretty progressive allegory there. Allegories. It was, especially because uh, it's later revealed. Spoilers okay? Spoilers okay? Spoilers. I'll put a warning at the beginning. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Um, it's later revealed that the, um, the people were, uh, enslaved or the, the alien race was enslaved by the, uh, humans. Well, so that's I do only... think that was very... That wasn't all humans. That was like a subculture of sleazy... Not like... all humans. <laughs> Listen, I'm standing up for humans here, okay? I mean, like, come on. Some rough ass shit. Not, not, not all... Yeah, I'm just, I know. Well, that, isn't that the point that that's the next step, you know, where we're telling ourselves, oh, it's not all of us, and some of us did oppose it, you know, our, our uh, ancestors, whatever, where some of us were subjected to it. It's, you know, it's a nuanced conversation. It is. So it's I think a it's a nuanced movie. And it is a very nuanced movie. But it's well done. The allegory isn't like so in your face it's that it's insulting schlocky. to your intelligence. Yes. Like it's very deep and character driven. I uh, will say when the alien becomes pregnant, it starts acting really weird and like really like, I'm pregnant. It's pregnant. It's a warrior alien and its maternal side took over when I it know, got but pregnant. Like, even pregnant ladies are like, oh, it's, it, I love it. I'm excited about this fucking is a lot like it's it was a little like um of like a specific view of what a pregnant person would be like a little um who's to say what all the drafts are like when they're pregnant yeah i guess you're right but it it, it felt it, you know maybe it was just the acting it felt like why is he doing that it felt a little weird because his feminine side was taken over so see there's where i take issue because that's nonsense the feminine side uh, the women i've known who are pregnant have you ever been pregnant no no of course not the women that you've known have been pregnant don't act like that when they're pregnant how do you know we spend a lot of time with them when they were pregnant. They don't knit clothing for their children, and so yeah, but if they do, if some of them do, but they're not like it. he kind of. Did, can you gotta hold my drink for a minute? He did like a little bit of like, ha ha, I'm pregnant, and the miracle in my belly, and blah blah blah, and that's not how pregnant ladies behave. Really? N I've. Have you ever seen any of our pregnant friends act like that? No, absolutely not. They don't act like that. They're excited. They're about Instagramming that shit all the time. They're like, look at my belly. No, they're not. We're at no. seven and a half okay. weeks now, and I'm, I'm really excited. Go like, Katie, yeah. who loves pregnancy and is a doula, and like she just she's she's really into you know childbirth. She's a, 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 a professional, a, you know midwife. So she's really excited, about, and she didn't act like that. So that's I, I just you. We're gonna it's have to agree to disagree. It's an individual thing. Anyways, we're we're agree. on the, the topic of that's the aliens' asexuality. That's one of the issues I didn't care for. Um, I I thought it was good. I never knew that it was directed by Wolfgang Peterson, who's the same guy who did the Never Ending Story. Tell that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But watching it, knowing that it was Wolfgang Peterson, I could see it a lot more this time. That could, that dude's a good director. We should see what else he directed. The but, cinematography, um, the coloring. 
the, but the writing the music, was kind of like the, music the Twilight did get Zone. a little too away from me. The I... music was a little corny. <laughs> it was a little. It was kind of 1960s. I mean, the movie was made in the 80s, but it was kind of like 1960s music. It was a little cheesy. Yes, I would a little dated. All like, of the flaws uh, that I encountered, like such as what I was saying about the pregnant people, which I will not back down on, and the the relationship between the child of the alien and the guy and the music there was it did um it was sincere to the point of almost cheese but it was still really touching it was still a really good movie i enjoyed it i uh i, I hadn't seen it for several years and i knew that it was a good movie i actually didn't realize how good of a movie i guess i had to be a it was really movie. good but it was it, it was a good science fiction all right selena um i liked it i thought that j-lo did a really good job it's a really good story um yeah, I'm gonna be real. Like I, I understand that. Uh, this is an unpopular opinion, but I do think JLo was a little breathy. There were parts of it. You described it to me as being like certain parts of it are like lifetime. Yes. To be fair, when you told me that, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were meaning like there was gonna be some like evil dude in it, and there, the the subtext was gonna be like, "All oh, men are evil rapist pigs," and da 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 da. Unfortunately, she just meant it was a little corny. No, no. Unfortunately, in, 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 in lifetime parts. movies, it's usually a lady who's the um, scary. You know, mother may I dance with danger. Uh, there's a nanny who's going to kill somebody. It's usually a single white female situation. So just for your point of reference. That's Castrating a dude and just no, like... No, that's not a lifetime thing. Usually the man is being... I don't know. It's like a... I haven't seen that much lifetime. Yeah, it's usually I've pretty... It's, it's a bummer. So, it's a but bummer. I, I framed it for him. I said, kept telling him it was a true crime. And I'm pretty sure I told him many years prior what Would you really call that a true crime? Yes. She dies. She's killed. She's murdered by That's her the fan liter club literally the last like five minutes of the movie. Yeah, but the important so he didn't like this. But the important thing that the movie does is that it sets up her rise and how important it was to her community yeah. specifically. Which and was cool. It was good. It just it stabs you in the heart with the murder. And it, it doesn't even give the worst details about the murder. The fact that that woman pretended that she'd been raped, and so Selena took her, took her to the hospital, brings her back to the hotel and was like can i just get the financial records and then the woman kills oh, her so fucked up yeah no but like i mean like look i get that it just happens out of nowhere there's something about it the way it happened there was no like friggin epilogue or anything it was just like oh, you mean it, you it, it, it's like she she rose she became so sad and then she died and then and then that's it well that's like kind it, of what happened like, and now she's this icon she really is. No, I mean, I, I I get it. And it was like a good movie. I just feel like there was a way that they could have... The, the very ending. I feel like there was a way that they could have, like... Well, if you want to enjoy yourself, or... I don't know. Depends on what you're into. But the lady does do an interview, and she sounds insane. She's a really bad person. Whoa. So, that I could mean, be your epilogue. Let's hope for her, her sake that she stays in prison. Yeah, she's going to be... She's going she'll to probably be get killed by the Latin American be, community. Right. Yeah. She's going to be eligible for parole in 2025, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Just keep her, really, keep her inside. Really terrible her. woman. Yeah. But it was a really good movie. It was really... The, I, I, it was a good movie. It was really good. It, was, it had a little bit of cheese, but I would say I would say proportionally, it had about the same amount of cheese as Enemy Mine. Am I right? I think Selena they were had equal. more cheese, but I think the point is that it, it it should it should it should like it should be this beautiful pure beginning which got completely ruined by this maniac. Hmm. So, anyways, I I would call our our first double feature uh, a success. Wild success. What's up next? The Omen two and the closet. If I can find the closet, we'll we'll try to. So we'll, let's take a look at a couple of our options here. Well, because so what we did was we made a list of the movies that we both want to watch, want the other one to watch, and right. we ranked them. So we're going in descending order. So the ones that whatever we, both we most didn't want to didn't want to watch the most, we're watching, we're watching first, first and then so we'll work yeah. our way up to. Um, so I believe yeah, either we're watching the closet or I'm not there. The closet is about a, it's yeah. a French movie and it's about a man who pretends to be gay. It might not have aged well. We'll see. I know it has the best cat in the, in cinema history. Cat? It's a kitten. and a, a Oh, I thought, I thought you meant cast, kitten. but you left out the S. Cat. Is the best cat. And um, I'm the not... Cat. I'm not there is the biopic about um, Dylan... Bob, Bob Dylan. Dylan. Uh, Which I'm who, interested to see. And it, he's... Because Kate He's Blanchett. played by, I think, like, four different people. Uh, Heath Ledger... 
Uh, Kate Blanchett. Uh, Kate Blanchett, a little boy. I can't remember the little boy, the actor's name, and then an older... I don't remember the older actor's name. It sounds interesting. It's, and I hear that Kate Blanchett was, like, arguably the best of everybody, which is pretty impressive. Knocked it out of the park, but, but also... a pretty solid actress. I would also say... I mean, like, I've been wanting him to watch this movie in for, forever, and I... Uh, Bob Dylan's a rough... I've seen him in concert, and I left because he sucks no, so badly. No, no, no. Jeffrey does not care for that. <laughs> Sorry, Jeffrey. Um, so that's that. And so that's we'll that. probably be watching either The Omen 2 or what's the other option? You don't know because it's on First Man on the Moon? What's The First Man on the Moon about? It's a 1960s science fiction about these guys who build a spaceship and go to the moon and encounter an alien race that lives there. <clears throat> This was before we went on the moon and realized that there was no alien race there. So, but uh, yeah, I would say that our first viewing, our first double feature was uh, was a pretty, su pretty, pretty successful. Can I get some? Was early a pretty success. So you feel that it's probably going to be a good, good series of good performances for I'm Not There, but maybe not as excited about the subject matter. Is that where why you ranked it so low? I have like my taste. I have like my favorite genres. I can respect. So what when about movie... this doesn't get your blow your screw up? I, I I don't give a shit about Bob Dylan. Okay, um, so about that movie, it sounds very dry, and I feel like black and white and dry. Their clothes aren't going to be great. Huh. What am I even doing? Way to sell it. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll get back to you when we do that double feature and what we actually wind up watching. We will let you know in the next video. But until then, that's all she wrote.